It'd be like somebody asking me this, should I use steroids? And I say, no, they're horrible. Don't use them. Coach Greg, today's video, we're going over Alex Eubank, who's talking about glorifying steroids in the fitness industry, the problems in the fitness industry, what's going on, how are we going to solve this problem? And so let's jump right into this. What is going on? Again, I keep seeing these, like the, the agenda on in the fitness industry now versus what it was when I first started is so like different. And so imagine how scary that is for me to hear. Alex Eubank, who's less than half my age, he's only 23, I'm 48, says that Already, in the last several years, it's completely changed. That what it's like now is that steroids are being glorified, that performance-enhancing drugs are now starting to become cool. And so imagine how scary that is if it's changed this much in that short a period of time. Imagine how much worse it could get in the next several years. Again, bodybuilding has its place in this world, and I think that's great. It's just that I know the fitness industry, and I know like the kids, like the demographic, and they're really young. When I was in school, you didn't think about using steroids as a teenager. It simply wasn't something you thought about. And remember, with knowledge comes power, but the problem is they're seeing too much of the good and not enough of the bad. Everyone sees the guys winning bodybuilding shows, the Chris Bumsteads, or perhaps guys who are becoming excessively popular, really famous, guys like Sam Sulik. And of course, because it's their heroes, they want to do everything to be exactly like them. And the problem is when you're young, you're more likely to take risk. It's simply in your biology. It's not your fault, but you're more likely to succumb to the pressures, the dangers of using performance enhancing drugs. A lot of these kids, I feel like they're ending up hopping on gear, bro. I was talking to a few people at the Arnold who came up to me and this is really why I'm, why I'm even going about this and like they were bro they were like probably 15 years old social media is becoming more and more rampant parents are letting their kids scroll on instagram youtube watching whatever they want and as young as they want they're not being monitored by their parents and so what do we expect and does social media does the fitness industry glorify steroids absolutely you thought it was maybe it does. You thought it was a question as to whether it does. Of course it does. Let's start with bodybuilding. What is bodybuilding reward? The biggest and the leanest, the most symmetrical. And you think that if you use steroids, it's going to make that easier? Of course it is. And so by default, bodybuilding promotes steroid use. The fact that they don't drug test in 90 plus percent of competitions means that, hey, let's turn the blind eye. It's okay. Do what you want. It's a beauty pageant. And the reality is, yes, it is. And for the most part, these are adults making adult decisions. And in whatever country they are in, it's perhaps legal or perhaps they're using so with the advice and consent for their own doctor. Remember, I'm in Canada. We're allowed to take steroids. It's not illegal. We have doctors. They can prescribe HRT. But for some people in some countries, it is in fact illegal. A few of them in that like age range and it's telling me how their friends or them even for, for one of them, is on gear. And so oftentimes people say, yeah, I'm not on steroids. I'm just on SARMs. I'm just going to take some of that MK677. Every single day I have kids, teenagers writing me in the DM saying, hey, what cycle should I take? What steroids should I use? What SARMs are safe for me to use right now? They're 14, they're 15. But the problem is we know people with millions of followers who have used steroids openly use them, not making this shit up. And yet they have millions of followers and they've won bodybuilding competitions and so on. And so what message does that give? They're not directly telling you to use something and perhaps they're even saying don't. But if you say don't use steroids and you're on steroids yourself and you look amazing and you're famous, popular, rich, what message is that creating? It's telling people, yeah, I'm saying one thing, but I'm telling you quite another. It'd be like somebody asking me this, should I use steroids? And I say, no, they're horrible. Don't use them. And if you're scared of steroids, it's too much. Oh, we got something else for you. We got the alternative. It's called SARMs. It's called MK677. It's not really a steroid. And so guess what? You can take this gateway drug and then wait for steroids a little bit later. Um, if you're taking it to compete, become a professional bodybuilder, I understand that. That I understand. I'm not speaking against that in any way because you have to. And then people who compete, they'll tell you this. Don't use steroids unless you compete. If you compete, you need it to level out the playing field. And so unless you're a competitor, you shouldn't use it. 
Well, it's easy for them to say because they're a competitor. And so guess what they're doing? They're justifying it. They're using self-justification. They're making it okay in their own minds. And so despite the fact it might be illegal or it might be immoral, it might be whatever, they're saying, yeah, I get a pass because I'm a competitor. But if I wasn't competing, I'd never do it. Why would I do that? You really think that's the case? How many guys you know that stop competing immediately go off steroids, never touch anything for the rest of your life? Not even HRT. Not many. At this super dumb young age, it was like 15, 15 to 17. Regardless, that's still an issue. I'm just like, why? Well, I do believe he understands why. The pressure from social media to have that amazing physique, the desire to have it now, wanting to fit in, trying to look cool, trying to make friends, trying to get a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a circle friend. Of course, the pressures are there. Of course, the pressures are obvious. The problem is, at that age, you cannot possibly understand the consequences. I used to teach physical education. I used to teach about steroids. Would have a test. Here's the side effects of steroids. They're writing it down. They have it memorized. They know. Do you really think that's enough to stop them from wanting to do it? Do you really think that telling someone, hey, you can get gynecomastia, you can get acne, you can get irritable, perhaps you can get angry, or that it will lower your HDL, increase your LDL, increase blood pressure, possibly cause cardiovascular diseases and so on. you really think that makes a difference? Maybe a little bit. But what do you think makes more difference? Caring about some future heart attack that they might get in their 40s, 50s, 60s, or beyond? Or how they look and feel right now? But I'm here to tell you, bro, that shit is not worth it, bro. You do not have to take gear, SARMs, any of that dumb stuff to get a good physique. Let's assume that Alex is 100% natural. Even if he is, he has ridiculously good genetics. Full stop. How could Alex possibly understand what it's like for a teenager with shit for genetics? No muscle on their bodies whatsoever. They've been training for three years. They don't have as much muscle at 18 as Alex had when he was 14. And so simply telling them you don't need steroids to build an impressive physique. You didn't, Alex. I didn't. Jesse James didn't. Will Tennyson didn't. Jeff Nipper didn't. Kino Body didn't. Any IFBB pro in the world didn't. But what about them? Perhaps they did. And so just saying to someone, you can develop an amazing physique without steroids, so you don't need it. Why would you ever take it? Just don't do it. Just say no to drugs. That is not the answer. It'd be like when your math teacher would ask you a simple math question, perhaps it was three times four, and they said, this is an easy one. Or maybe it was 11 plus nine, it's an easy one. Or maybe it was $100 plus tax, 15% tax, it's so easy, multiply by 1.15, it's easy. Hearing it's easy doesn't make it easier to find that answer. If you don't know how to spell school and you think it's S-K-O-O-L and the teacher says it's easy to spell school, don't you know that one? It's not making it any easier. Perhaps being more understanding, caring and saying, I get it. I understand why you at 16 or 17 or even 14 would want to use SARM, steroids, whatever. You perhaps hate your body. You're 100 pounds overweight. You have no muscle whatsoever. You're an ectomorph. People make fun of you. They bully you. They tease you. They mock you. No woman ever wants to talk to you. I get that. But to just say, don't do Sarah, just say no, it doesn't work. The problem is in society's unrealistic expectations on you. But in saying that, how can I help? Well, all I can say is try not to compare yourself to other people. But imagine how hard that is. How do you not compare yourself to other people? Of course you're going to compare. But can you compare less? And so I ask you this. I challenge you. Can you be better tomorrow than you were today? And perhaps you're 6 feet tall, 14 years of age, 120 pounds, and you don't have a lot of muscle. Remember, it's going to get better. I promise you it will get better. As hard as it seems right now, as much as people are making fun of you for perhaps how you look, how you talk, how you dress, it's going to get better. You don't need to be the best bodybuilder in the world to feel good about yourself. There are so many things more about you than how you look on the outside. Think of it. How are you on the inside? There is going to be someone out there that's going to appreciate you for you. Not just how you look, but you on the inside. How you look on the outside, this is just a bonus. But remember this, 
People with the most impressive physiques in the entire world, and I'm not just talking about bodybuilders, I'm not even talking just about males, men, women, whoever, the best looking people in the world are often the ones who are the most insecure. They're the ones getting the surgeries, using steroids, doing everything to mask, camouflage how they really truly feel on the inside. And so rather than thinking you have to measure up to other people based on how you look, thinking you need to use steroids to fit in, Try and find a different circle of friends. Those who don't overemphasize and think that you need to look a certain way to be cool to fit in. And so if you're sitting there contemplating using steroids right now, thinking you need them, you need SARMs, you need steroids, for what? You think that if you develop that body, you're now gonna have self-confidence and self-esteem and I'm now so much more proud? Who cares? It's not the end result that should make you proud, but the effort. If you try, try harder than last time, you put it in your all, and you don't get the results that you want, should you be disappointed? Of course not. You put in the work. The pride you get is from the effort you put into what you're doing. And so when you go to the gym and you train 100% natural and you put on two pounds in an entire year and you think this sucks, why does it suck? You trained your hardest and you put two pounds naturally all by yourself. Yeah, your friend put on 20 pounds muscle. They took steroids. Perhaps they didn't even train as hard as you. So what? You trained harder. You worked harder. You earned more respect. And perhaps not on social media. Perhaps not from your friends. Perhaps you don't get as many compliments. But you know. You know you put in the work. You know that you tried and you gave it your all and you did your best and you should be proud. When I entered my first triathlon, 13 years of age, 82 competitors, guess what place I got? 82nd place, dead last. Do you think I felt embarrassed, ashamed, disappointed? Of course not. I gave it my best. I tried. And guess what I did the next year? I trained all year, came back, took off 20 plus minutes off my time. And I beat someone that year and eventually I got top three I won the junior provincials I placed third at senior open men's but I was never good enough to be a national champion a pro but I loved it and I was very proud of what I did but if you're judging your worth based on your performance and not based on your effort there's something wrong with you and so don't enter bodybuilding competitions thinking if I win, I will then be proud. Think if I give it my all, I will then be proud. And so when I competed as an IPB pro, knowing full well there was a zero chance I would ever win, did that mean I wouldn't compete? How many want to enter a powerlifting competition, but you're not strong enough yet? You're going to keep training. Why? If you like powerlifting, enter a competition. I don't care if you can't bench press 100 pounds. You enter anyway. You do your best. You train for it. That's what's fun, making the improvements. And so rather than thinking I need steroids, think I need to put in effort. I need to be the best version of myself. And that does not include using steroids. And yeah, you're going to say you're a hypocrite. Sure, perhaps I am. But remember, I did it natural, competed 42 times, waited until I was in my 30s. Eventually, I said, this is not enough. Perhaps it was the pressures from social media. I wanted to be an IPB pro. I wanted to be sponsored. I wanted to be the best in the world. I ended up using performance enhancing drugs. I did that and I competed. And what damage did that do to my health? I don't know. But what I do know is I loved bodybuilding from the age of 10 onwards without using steroids. And so if you're a teenager, Consider this, I was 10 years old, trained probably early than you, and I was into my 30s before I started using steroids. How old are you? How many years have you been training? Is it more than 20? Is it more than 10? Well, if it's not, what are you thinking about? You haven't even reached your natural genetic potential. And so, yeah, huge problem in the fitness industry, huge problem in bodybuilding. The pressure to use steroids, it's greater than ever before. And people don't understand that you don't need to live up to society's expectations. Be yourself. But yet, here's what happens. You speak out, you say anything. You give your opinion and someone doesn't like it, they try to cancel you. And so just because you don't look like your favorite superstar doesn't mean people need to cancel you. And if they think you need to look that way, they aren't really your friends. My physique that I have right now 
is attainable naturally with good genetics, obviously. And I don't even have a diet. His physique is not attainable by almost anyone who's natural. Most people can achieve this. And so if you think you can and you don't, you might think, oh, what did I do wrong? Did I not train hard enough? Did I not watch enough Jeff Nippert or Mike Isretel videos? What did I do wrong? Oh, I know. Perhaps it's because I didn't take 96 to 98% of my sets of failure. Perhaps I didn't bulk hard enough. Maybe I didn't drink enough chocolate milk and five burger fries. I didn't bulk and cut. Do you know what bulk and cut's gonna do? It's gonna cause binge eating disorders. It's gonna cause you to yo-yo diet. You're gonna develop body dysmorphia. These are horrible things. Rather than that, listen to Coach Greg. Main gain, be happy, be proud, do your best. You don't need steroids. If you don't use steroids, no, you're probably not gonna achieve your dream physique. You're thinking, no, but Alex just said if I had above average genetics and I train hard, I could. Sorry, probably not gonna do it. I want to set yourself up for realistic goals right now. Whatever you think you can achieve, probably half it, that's probably what you're gonna get. Oh, that's so much bad advice. You're demoralizing it. You're making us think we can't do it. Isn't it better to reach for the stars and if you hit the moon, you'll be happy? No, it's better to reach for the moon and hit the moon. And if you wanna go to stars after, then do it. And so lower your expectations. Most people are going to look average. That is why we have something called the bell curve. Most people's physiques go be somewhere in here. The extremes, the amazing physiques on the extremes, two, three, four standard deviations above the mean. They're very rare. And the majority of those physiques, they're on steroids. And so if you are natural and think, yeah, I can do it, yeah, some of you can, one in 10,000, but this message is for the majority of people. Most of you not gonna develop that physique, nor do you need to. You don't have to. Who said you need to have a six pack? Who said it? I've stated 15% body fat, that is healthy. And what about cardio? Do 150 minutes of moderate cardiovascular exercise a week. Train each muscle group twice a week. Try to put the fork down once in a while. Don't eat a bunch of shit food. If you do that, Work on yourself, work on your mind. Remember, it's not just the physical, but it's also the mental, the social, the spiritual. This all encompasses being healthy. A lot of young men find validation in the gym because they're able to see, you know, either their physique getting better or their, you know, bench numbers going up. It gives them meaning and satisfaction because they're progressing in an area of life. Exactly, going to the gym can give you meaning, you're progressing, you're seeing this transformation in yourself and in life. But if you use steroids, you're cheating that method. If you can't get those results on your own, especially as a teenager, just keep working at it. But you don't need to compare yourself to other people. As long as you're getting better, you're doing great. You don't need to win. You don't need to have the best physique. You don't need to put on the most amount of muscle. But as a teenager, you don't need steroids to get better. Perhaps you need steroids to develop an amazing physique. To look like Alex Eubank, perhaps you do but you don't need to look like this. But when you let that obsession get too, too unhealthy, you start finding your whole entire identity in that and that alone. You shouldn't base your self-worth based just on how you look. That's ridiculous. It should be based perhaps on your effort, your intensity. How do you treat other people? How are you with your friends? Not on how you look. And if you think that looks is the most important, you got the wrong group of friends, try and look elsewhere. But what you really need in that entire thing is you just, you need a relationship with God. And that's what I was trying to tell Jesse on that thing. It's like you're, you're lacking a deeper sense of meaning and purpose. And so Alex says, you know, what you need is a relationship with God. I'm not as godly as Alex is personally. I see nothing wrong with that. I'm not against that. It's great for many people. For me, that relationship I think you need to have is with yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a relationship with God. I'm saying for me, that relationship, it comes from within, from within yourself. And if you don't know much about this, you need to start reading. Stop watching so much TV. Start reading. Start exploring. Start thinking about it. Start analyzing. From there, you can grow. You can do better. Think, wow, tomorrow I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try doing less of that. I was perhaps a little bit too mean to that person. The next time I see them, I'm gonna be a little bit nicer. Please reflect on your life, reflect on how you are and become a better person. If you really are considering hopping on gear, I want you to ask yourself for like anything, ask yourself like, what am I doing this for? And so if you're thinking about using steroids right now, why? Like sit down and think about it. Write in a journal, write out the pros and the cons. Why am I doing this? Is it to get a girl? 
Is it to impress the guys at the gym? Is it because I'm stuck at my PR of 205 on the bench press and I really need to hit 225? Because if that's the answer, this is ridiculous. I understand it might feel important right now, but when you get older, probably not going to be important. And so if you don't know what you should be doing, maybe talk to someone older, someone who's been in your shoes. You don't think I've ever been 12 years old, 13, 14? Of course I have. And so when I speak to you, I'm speaking from experience because I was once you. I was once a teenager. I've gone through many of the experiences that you've had in your past. And so when I say, hey, you shouldn't use steroids as a young age, it's because I know better from being old. You might be thinking, that old grandpa, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Really? Eventually one day you will be that old grandpa and you will think, wow, you know, I know so much more now at 48 than I did at 16. I feel so much more educated, so much smarter. Well, if I could go back in time, imagine the things I wouldn't have done. And so pretend I'm your future self and I'm traveling back in time to warn you about some of the stupid shit that you might do. And one of those stupid things you might do is using performance enhancing drugs as a teenager. Don't do it. I'm saying to you guys, because I know you, the majority of people watching this are young men. You can do it healthy, naturally, it just might take long. There you have it. There's my spiel on problems in the fitness industry. You don't need steroids. The problem is we need to stop comparing ourselves to other people. We need to stop thinking. We need to look a certain way to fit in. We need to start getting better friends, a different circle of friends, ending it here. And if you aren't a teenager anymore, you're in your 20s, you've hit a sticking point. You can, of course, get Geo2 Max, Acti Builder, Turk Builder. We got also supplements like creatine, protein powder, pre-workouts, so many supplements head over to my website and enter code greg for 15 percent off now remember we got the free diet and training program so all you teenagers out there you get a free training program it's going to help you to make the gains remember this took months to develop multiple programs it's close to 50 pages in length head over to my website it's free become one of the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers subscribe click the bell button comment to boost the algorithm like the video if you in fact like it helps the channel a lot please add a comment don't forget to watch one of those two bloops if you're interested in coaching plans by me and my team you can of course get those the training book right here we see cookbook 3.1 there's several cookbooks pdf and hard copy as well as the circle diet book my life's work how to lose weight keep it off for the rest of your life head over to my website and see what we got going and until next time, I am out.